Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Thursday, August the 1st, 2013, and here are our top stories. Tonight, the Pentagon is giving Al-Qaeda contracts in Afghanistan. Putin refuses Eric Holder's extradition request for Snowden. And InfoWars Nightly News has a chance to talk to the winner of the Operation Paul Revere contest. All this and more tonight on InfoWars Nightly News. Well, do you remember when Rachel Maddow ridiculed Alex Jones for pointing out the connections between the U.S. government and Al-Qaeda? You saw them stage Fast and Furious. Folks, they staged Aurora. They staged Sandy Hook. The evidence is just overwhelming. He also says the evidence is overwhelming that President Obama is now personally the global head of Al-Qaeda. See, folks, the evidence is just overwhelming. Do I have to spell it out for you? Are you blind? Well, no one is more blind than those who refuse to see. Now, this is a story from Prison Planet. But this is also a story from Bloomberg. And this is, Bloomberg is not known to be a uh, small government advocacy outlet. So this is what Bloomberg reported. I am deeply troubled that the U.S. military can pursue, attack, and even kill terrorists and their supporters, but that some of the U.S. government believe we cannot prevent these same people from receiving a government contract. Now that is a quote from Joe Sopko, Special Inspector General for Afghanistan reconstruction. So we have Bloomberg quoting an inspector general of the U.S. government saying, even though these people are terrorists, we can't stop them from getting a government contract. And he goes on to say, they may be enemies of the UN United States, but that's not enough to keep them from getting government contracts. He said, while the Obama administration is funding, equipping, and training al-Qaeda extremists in Syria to overthrow the Assad government, it is also awarding contracts to al-Qaeda after a decade-plus long war against the quote-unquote terrorists in Afghanistan. Well, this is nothing new. Rachel Maddow can read this in the headlines today. She could have read it in the headlines a long time ago. The government created al-Qaeda to fight the Russians in Afghanistan. Bin Laden and Anwar al-Awlaki were CIA assets, and they continue to fund them, as well as run a massive drug war operation out of Afghanistan. It has been pointed out in the past by other news outlets, although we re reported it here as well, that uh, worldwide poppy production out of Afghanistan was only 10% of the worldwide poppy production, and now it has risen to over 90% after the U.S. military went there to assist them in doing that function. So it's a part of the drug war story as well. But now the real aid to al-Qaeda is going to happen after we leave, perhaps big aid to them. Also reported from InfoWars, NATO leaves live munitions behind at abandoned Afghan Air Force bases. The U.S.-led military coalition in Afghanistan has agreed to do a better job of cleaning up deadly unexploded munitions from its bases and firing ranges as it closes them down after the U.N. accused the coalition of leaving dangerous explosives behind. So-called explosive remnants of war have emerged in the past few months as an increasing danger to civilians, in particular children. In the first half of the year, nearly 150 people were killed or injured when such munitions detonated. Well, right now, they're just talking about carelessly left behind unexploded ammunition. But we have seen, as the government has pulled out of one country after the other after their war, that they leave behind massive military bases filled with all kinds of equipment. And usually, after we leave a country, the people that we were there to fight usually take over. So, of course, that's going to be al-Qaeda, but then we <laughs> kind of put them in power to start with. But it's not just the wars that we know about. The Pentagon has secret wars. This is a story that was broken by the New American. It's Pentagon's secret wars, you don't even have a right to know. When asked by senators to identify the groups being fought, the Pentagon said it's a secret. If the organizations are infiltrated enough to be targeted with military force, why can't they be mentioned publicly? There's a countervailing, very important interest in the public knowing who the government is fighting against in its name. And that's a quote from Jack Goldsmith of Harvard University Law School. Now, another study done by another Harvard professor and by a professor from UCLA is titled, How Many Wars is the U.S. Fighting Today? And they estimate in their study that the U.S government is fighting at least five, quote, unannounced and undeclared wars around the world. Now you can watch the InfoWars Nightly News streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show.